Mr. Prime Minister, let me just uh, again thank you for inviting me and my delegation to Sri Lanka and extending your hospitality to us. I want to thank you. Uh, as you quite rightly said, I'm not a stranger to Sri Lanka. I came first time when I was just out of university and when you were starting your political career, I was starting my cricketing career. And um, I have very fond memories since then of Sri Lanka. And uh, I, I want to say that we watched Sri Lankan cricket team develop from a non-test playing status to eventually a team that went on to win the World Cup and World Cup winning in Pakistan. So um, we, we uh, me and my, and the cricketers who saw the evolution of the Sri Lankan cricket team, we, uh, we felt good because it was a team from the subcontinent that emerged into a, a world-class cricket team. So I just wanted to mention that because that's, that was my association with Sri Lanka until this visit of mine. This visit is to strengthen our bilateral relationship. It is to strengthen our trading ties. Pakistan is uh, part of the, uh, the Belt and Road Initiative of China. CPAC is one of its flagship program. And it means connectivity. And so I've asked uh, my delegation here to find ways and means where we can enhance our trade and connectivity. And through CPAC, connectivity right up to Central Asia for Sri Lanka. We have also discussed other areas where we can um, enhance our trading ties, where um, Sri Lanka can benefit from uh, Pakistan's connectivity in the future right up to Central Asia. And um, our trading ties will also mean that the two countries will get together, will, will come closer together. We shared a common problem of terrorism. Pakistan suffered 10 years of, uh, of the worst kind of terrorism where we lost 70,000 people. And we know that Sri Lanka for 30 years combated terrorism. And I'm pleased to say that Pakistan played its part in helping Sri Lanka to um, resolve this problem which was, uh, which was uh, impeding your development and your growth and a country which relies on tourism can never progress if there is uh, terrorism. Can't have investment if there is terrorism because that's what happened to Pakistan. In those 10 years, tourism dried up and hardly any investment came into Pakistan because of uh, the threat of terrorism. So um, we share that common problem and um, now we have faced another problem which is the coronavirus. I know Sri Lanka has suffered like all those countries which depend upon tourism. And uh, we discussed how the developed countries can help the developing world at this time. That the, develop, the developed world right now should not be insular. They must realize that this is a problem that, that has afflicted everyone, but specifically it has hit the poor countries more and the poor in all the countries much more. The poor are, have suffered everywhere but the poor countries have suffered the, mo the most. So we have discuss discussed how we can jointly work on the poor countries from getting debt relief. In Pakistan, we came up with the biggest stimulus package in our hi history. 
$1.8 billion. But when you compare the United States, the stimulus package in the United States is almost $3,000 billion. U.S. has a population of 330 million. Pakistan's population is 220 million, 70% of the U.S. And yet the, the total amount of money we could give as a stimulus package because of those who suffered from the coronavirus was $8 billion compared to $3,000 billion in the U.S. So this is the discrepancy. And the coronavirus has exposed this, this huge inequality in the world. Discrepancy. And the coronavirus has exposed this, this huge inequality in the world. And that's why I feel that the world organizations like the United Nations should step in and look after the, the countries that have taken a real beating uh, because of this uh, coronavirus. <clears throat> Apart from that, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, I want to invite you again in front of the media to Pakistan. And Pakistan has probably one of the greatest Buddhist heritage in the world. We recently discovered a sleeping Buddha, which is probably the biggest in the world. It's a 40 feet sleeping Buddha, uh, because the north of Pakistan was the center of the Gandhara civilization, the ancient Buddhist civilization. So we are also going to invite uh, people from Sri Lanka to come over. And we now have, we are planning a Buddhist trail where all the great shrines and places uh, uh, for, the, for, for those from the Buddhist community, the religion, can come over to our country. And of course, I start with inviting you most of all, Mr. Prime Minister. And thank you again for your hospitality. Well, thank you very much. And thank you very much for